start with uh, uh, some context. So this is level one context. Uh, there will be level two. So, so what is hard Lipschitz? If uh, X is a smooth projective over C and omega in H2 is the class of hyperplane section. So how will it go? Let's see. Section. Then, um, or for for other people, it is C1 of the ample uh, class, ample line bundle. Then there is the operation of multiplying by omega, and it goes, if you look at it from h d minus k to h d plus k, is an isomorphism. Where d is uh, uh, or dimension d. Is a dimension. So there is in the middle, middle of the cohomology is the center of this, and then there is symmetry. So and and um, kind of observation, or I don't know, is it something similar? Exists in. Uh, In the world, in the different, uh, in different world, of uh, symplectic, symplectic holomorphic affine varieties. Okay, so. This is a vague uh, kind of thing, and I want to show some examples to just to kind of bring you into the context of what I mean. So, up to which level is it okay? Is it everywhere fine? Okay, so example one will, will be here. Example one. Take um, C will be, um, even dimension algebraic torus. This is just just the, the baby example. So the most and omega is a form d t i over t i d t j over t j. It's called this kind of form is called log canonical. So it's called log canonical. And um, suppose a i j is a is minus a j i as the matrix non degenerate then it it is a linear algebra exercise to check that if you take operator of capping with omega. Um, k times from h d minus k of t to h d plus k of t is isomorphism. Okay, the cohomology is just the exterior algebra over over the co-character lattice over the character lattice. And this is just property in the exterior algebra. But there is something very different between these two examples. Because here d is the dimension, and here d is half of the dimension. So it's not the same. It's okay. Now, so example two. 
Uh, so we take C star times C star with the form dx over x, dy over y. And we do, um, so we look at this, as, this are the coordinate lines. This is one C and this is another C, so x and y. And then we take a point here and we blow it up. So we blow up one zero. And uh, this is um, in the situation of affine varieties, it is natural to pick a point at infinity and blow it up. It's different from usual blow up, where you take a point inside and blow it up. Okay. So in the equation, it means, well, strictly speaking, I have to com com I first add this line, then I blow it up, and then I remove it back. But in the level of formulas, very easy, it's very easy to compute. So you just write this equation, x minus 1 equals yz. Uh, well, so x is still in C star, but y can be arbitrary now. So given by, so this blow up is given by this, uh, this equation in variables x, y, z. Now you can eliminate x, so this is equivalent to complement to just y, z plus 1 is not 0. And so you get the complement complement of, of the set y z plus 1 equals 0 in C2. I was happy to see it uh, in uh, Hiraku's talk. <laughs> but, uh, yes. So uh, what is important about this? That first you check that this form extends to, to this um, so this is my x. X is a blow up. In uh, extends to this x, and um, and second, I want to say that as I said, x is a union of um, of the algebraic torus and C. So blowing up adds adds one copy of C. You can see it in the equation. If y equals to zero then x uh, must be uh, 1, and then z is anything. So if y is not 0, then it, it just uh, coordinate on c star. So we get, so, OK. And then we want, to, we want to compute cohomology of x. So, so this is a picture. How, um, how do you compute this cohomology? There is some. Uh, spectral sequence, but um, so you draw so let this be called T so you have H0 of T so X is an open set T and complement is C you use a, a standard technique to compute the cohomology from this data so I, I put here cohomology of T and then there is the residue map from H1 of T to H0 of C, which is, which is Z. This is Z. This is Z two times. And this is Z. Okay? And there is a residue map. And uh, after you and you're supposed to do, you're supposed to take cohomology with respect to the arrow. And this will kill, uh, will cancel one copy of Z here with one copy of Z there. So the result is, so obtain H0 of, of X is Z. Then there is H1 of X also Z, H2 of X equals z. Okay, that's the, how the cohomology looks like, one dimensional in these degrees. And then there is this form. So what does it do? You see that it's uh, kind of, um, the picture is symmetric and the form uh, 
provides an isomorphism from upper part to the lower part. So here, this is isomorphism. So in this, up to this point, comparing to the torus, nothing changed. You just removed one z here. But now in the next example, right, or maybe before going to the next example, I, how do you erase? Is there also some? I, no. It, so I just write on this, right? <laughs> okay. And of course, after um, after you saw that you can blow up one point, you can try blowing up more points. And so, example three is the same, the same, but blow, but also blow up the some other point, zero, one. So now you're blowing up two points. Now you can compute equations. You get x minus one is y z one, y minus one, x z two. You eliminate x, you get y z one z two, plus z two minus y plus one equals to zero. And And I don't know for people who, who are in the, who knows this. So this is so-called, so-called augmentation variety, variety associated to the trefoil uh, knot. So, to the trefoil knot. And uh, if you, <laughs> So there is this triply graded, graded Hovano homology. And it produces some polynomial A plus Q plus T. And at A equals zero, you get Q plus T. And, um, but f this computation of cohomology gives you Uh, H zero of X is Z, H one of X now is zero, right? Because uh, after you do the same, it will kill the other Z in H one and Z, and Omega does this, and uh, and still nothing interesting happened. Uh, but I just wanted to give you this example because this is. Uh, geometry behind this formula is it at a equals zero is q plus t it's two dimensional the cohomology of this is two dimensional and um, there is a way to to match this anyway so so you see that in this world already some kind of knots knots appear and uh, and then final finally example 4 I'm going to blow up six points. And um, so example four, we blow up six points. Let's see. Now, um, you remember that if you blow up six points on P2, you get a cubic, recall. Blow up six points on P2, produces, produces a cubic. And it turns out that our blow up will, our blow up 
will reduce a fine cubic. And this is um, this way you can obtain a character variety of uh, so this we get character variety variety of uh, p1 minus four points rank two and this is uh, computed by Fricke the famous uh, you have three variables one cubic equation. Um, but so again, there will be symplectic form. Uh, but let's do the com cohomology computation. Here, something will have something will be slightly different. So we have the torus. This is z two z z, and then there will be six copies of. Uh, so it's H zero of C C C six times, and this is Z to the six, and this map residue. Now, now the residue map will uh, kill all here, but there will be Z to the four here. So results of the computation is we have here H zero Z H sorry X Z H two of X Z there is zero here and now the question is there is some Z to the four here. So where does it go? Um, you know the spectral sequence business you should read your result by diagonals. So, uh, so this will be, sorry, this is not, um, not what I meant. I meant there is Z here, there is Z4 to the here, and this diagonal is H2 of X. So, so H2 of X got Z from, from the torus, one Z from the torus, and four, four Zs from this from these attached uh, lines. Okay, so here was Z2, Z6, Z2, and Z2 here canceled, I got Z4. Okay. So, what is, what happened? That if, so the omega, still gives you this isomorphism here. But uh, the symmetry is not, uh, does not respect homology indices. Because this is H2. If we wanted to have curious hard left sets as before, then this H2 must be isomorphic to H0. But there is no H0 paired with this uh, H2. So uh, the Mm, the explanation is that that uh, picture is not nice, is not symmetric from from the point of view of view of uh, cohomology index. And uh, uh, but it turns out, but is symmetric is from the point of view of uh, weight index. So um, So what is the weight? Weight is when you do this calculation, you should keep track of number of points you get over a finite field uh, when you do this. So for instance, here, this is like uh, H0 of T is a, is a generic point of the torus. 
So very finite field, you get Q square elements here. So this uh, has weight, so uh, weight is uh, Q square. And here it is Q and here it is one. And here, uh, so I mean two copies of Z would mean two Q. And the number of points on the torus is Q squared minus two Q plus one. Here we have six copies of the affine line. So over a finite field, you will have six Q points here. And when you uh, keep track of the weight filtration, then this two Q kills two Q from here. So if you put weights on this picture, this will be Q square, this will be four, Q, and this will be one. So in the picture, degree in Q will be always the height. So uh, in general, uh, the, the picture will be symmetric with respect to the Q degree. So uh, here are some notations. So you always have Q to the weight over two, where W is the weight So this is uh, standard. But I mean, I, I, um, I could spend a lot of time in explaining precisely what it means, uh, what is the Hodge theory, what is mixed Hodge theory, and so on. But uh, for, for this talk, I hope this kind of picture is, is sufficient. And now I will formulate first uh, some precise uh, statement. No, 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 no. So we have like first theorem. So this theorem is just a naive generalization of what is going, what have, has have been going on. So nothing really uh, new here. So fix D. Suppose X is filtered by closed subvarieties uh, XI goes is inside XI plus one and so on. And XI minus X I minus one is isomorphic to some algebraic torus and some affine uh, space, which are related by once every time you de decrease dimension of your torus by two, you increase dimension of C by one. So suppose, suppose X as a closed holomorphic form, two form omega, such that that restriction of omega to uh, such C star uh, to each uh, piece is a is a pullback via rejection of a log canonical non degenerate degenerate form on uh, on the torus part Then, then we have the curious, then curious hard Lerschitz. holds, which means that, um, so basically I explained what is, what, uh, 
what it means on the picture. Sorry. Yes. So you uh, take some, you start somewhere to the uh, left of D. So this, uh, we divide by half, so this corresponds to Q to the D minus I, this weight. And then HJ, and then you take product with omega I times. It is increasing the weight by 4i, and then h. But it messes up the homological index as, as it should. So j plus 2i. The symmetry is with respect to weight index, but the homological index is not controlled in this. So this is an isomorphism. So, so basically, in uh, meaning of this is that the same thing happened as in the examples one to four. Um, questions for the first part. Okay, now I will give you. Yes. So this is no. This is beyond my the, my reach. <laughs> this there is some construction of the lean that everybody is using as a black box. So roughly, whenever you do all computations with cohomology, you should know that it all operations preserve the weight filtration. And from this, you are supposed to deduce the weight filtration on the result. And then you take associated graded. Gr is associated graded. Did it answer? So now we go to context level two. So go sort of more um, real uh, technical stuff. So, so let me draw the picture, the usual picture, character variety of, yeah, so non-canonically you get the direct sum decomposition, and this is the pieces in the direct sum decomposition. Oh. <laughs> so I assume, so parabolic, Uh, this is a picture, it's not uh, precise. But this is always a fine variety. Well, in most cases, uh, natural, like the cubic from Freaky. Yeah, this is usually a fine variety. And then we have this moduli space, space of semi-stable, of stable, Stable Higgs bundles. Um, this which comes with the Hitchin system. Looks like your model is space and goes to the to RG. Yes, so and then there is a non-abelian Hodge correspondence between them. Non-abelian Hodge. And what do we know about this picture? So, observation one. So, Hauser 
Natalia and Rodriguez Villegas. Gave made a, uh, made a, a conjecture, and in the conjecture, I the explicit explicit formula for for the refined what is uh, Poincaré polynomial. So refined here means that uh, means that the weight filtration is taken into account. Okay. The usual Poincaré polynomial has one variable, but if you add this, you get two variables polynomial. So this is a polynomial uh, in the Q and T. Two variables of uh, character variety. So I'm, uh, I will take a long time to explain exactly what is the level of generality they make this conjecture and what kind of character variety. So I skip it here. So there's some character varieties, pretty general conjecture. But one thing that they noticed is that after making the conjecture that there is mysterious mysterious QT symmetry. Okay. This is one observation. So it, if you saw this uh, conjecture, then it has some McDonald's polynomials, some arms and legs and and it's symmetric in Q and T. Now if you translate to what it means in the uh, cohomology, then it's exactly this kind of symmetry that uh, I'm talking about. And they conjectured that. So uh, now another observation, maybe deeper one. So Maybe also inspired by this observation. So follow up with Decataldo Migliorini. Is that uh, P equals W. So the quest here is that we have this weight filtration here. But if you pass to here, there's some other, uh, it's not clear what it is, what filtration it is. And P equals W conjecture tells you what it should be. That uh, this weight filtration is uh, coincide with the perverse filtration. Is the perverse Lyrae. Filtration. For for Lyrae filtration, you need a map. So so it is this induced by the Hitchin map. By the Hitchin Hitchin map. X to C to the D. Okay, so. They checked it for uh, some case with GL2. And then uh, the question is, um, yeah, so what happens now for the perverse filtration on that side? And there we have some, some certain relative, relative hard left sheets. Usual hard left sheets for, uh, because the fibers of the Hitchin map are compact. So relative hard left sheets translated from P to W implies 
would, uh, would imply, imply curious hard meshes. Okay. So first, so somehow the picture is uh, complete once we assume these conjectures. And then I just want to make some remark. So it turns out this curious hard Lefschetz, like you can deduce it from P equals W, but then you can ask, can you do maybe the other way around? Can you deduce P equals W from curious hard Lefschetz? And it turns out that, um, that curious hard Lefschetz plus Plus P equals W in one direction implies uh, the full statement. So this is probably the way to we will use in the future to prove P equals W. Probably the way to prove because of There is a paper last week uh, on archive by Maulik and De Cataldo and maybe I forgot someone else that uh, do this for some special case. Genus 2 curve. Okay, now. Uh, The first is, is, yeah, just somehow observation. Yeah. Now I'm going to take talk about main results. This was my, uh, context. Yeah, if you want to hear that. To the, so we, we prove it for character varieties by using the observation about the decomposition into torus. And then some more work. And then, so here is no results. So, there will be a sequence of things I want to say. So I start with one. So there exists such picture X tilde, and then there is GLN parabolic character. So this is X variety with at least one parabolic point. So I require that in at least one point there is some, some monodromy and the monodromy has distinct eigenvalues. That's what it means. Or there is slightly modified definition when you are allowed to have the same, mono, same eigenvalues, but then you, have, you need to give me a choice of a complete flag in that, over that point. So for those who know what is parabolic, this is parabolic. Then, uh, so the first thing says that there is this N choose two C to the N choose two bundle X tilde and X tilde admits a stratification so that each piece is a vector bundle. Over C 
certain variety y beta associated to a braid beta. So this is, I'm not telling you what is y beta. I'm just saying that there is certain construction of some class of varieties associated to braids. And then I can stratify this x tilde by these varieties up to this thing that you might pass to a vector bundle, but which passing to vector bundle doesn't change cohomology too much. Yeah, just the way it's changed. Uh, so now each of these y beta admits a stratification so that each piece, piece is of the form uh, C star 2D minus 2I times CI for fixed D, for same D. So in all, in the, in the end, you get some stratification of X tilde. And the point here is that all these Ds are the same. Uh, so we have this nice uh, decomposition. If you, you want to know where it comes from, it is very brutal construction. I have this one point with with para one parabolic point. And I have some loop which comes back to the point. After I follow the loop, I have two flags. One original flag, but after Monroe, I have another flag. I compare them together, I get some permutation. So once you fix all permutations appearing in the picture, and you ask what is the corresponding part of the character variety, you get this variety associated to braid. And braid is just given by these permutations. You know, a sequence of permutations give you a braid. Each permutation can be lifted to a sort of smallest permutation, but then when you compose them, it becomes non-trivial braid. Right. So for instance, I don't know, this will be braid corresponding to transposition, but then you compose them, uh, you get a longer braid. So, so here we have a permutation, and then composing in this pi gives a break. So now, okay, so we have this cell decomposition, and we have, and remember, it's still in the special case when we have one parabolic point. The second thing we do, we have to keep track of the form. So we, uh, so restriction of, of Goldman's uh, form on the character variety. To, to y beta gives certain uh, na canonical form, gives, how did I call it, certain natural form form on y beta. And then we have to deal with this form on y beta, and it's a bit painful to compute, but Further restriction to 
to the to the component. gives a canonical log canonical canonical form on C star to the two G minus two I and the whole point is to prove that this form is non degenerate. So we need to we need to prove Prove this is non degenerate. And then I don't know, following, a, I followed a suggestion of, of Vivek Schende. Uh, there is a construction. Construction of a surface whose whose intersection form so it's a topological surface and there is intersection form on uh, on H one and this coincides with uh, this form written in coordinates. Yes, A I J in uh, omega sum. So this is uh, mm, so there is certain combinatorial construction and and then con calculation that tells you that this forms agree. agree. So this surface is like a covering of the original surface, but something strange happens around singularities. There is this braid, and um, if you're interested, I can tell you more about this surface. Okay. So, so from here we did use the curious hard left sheets for. So this implies Fourier's hard Lefschetz for for the character variety. Uh, with at least one parabolic point. So this is somehow first uh, milestone. Okay, maybe I have time to make one. Uh, so one uh, comment here. So if you are interested in this. Uh, if at least two parabolic points exist, then character variety contains a dense algebraic torus. So I don't know how well this is this is known or not. Or I talked to Simpson and he told me that he, is, he has a conjecture <laughs> like this, and I can show it under this assumption. But I think it should have been it should be known to to some people. Yeah. So. Um,
because some, there is this cluster coordinates on character varieties. And this should be the open, open cluster, one open chart. Okay, that's um, not clear. Okay, now, um, now we want to prove it for general character varieties, not uh, assuming parabolic point. So here is what I can say that moving around, so it's, I'm trying to be kind of understandable, the eigenvalues around moving around <laughs> around uh, uh, a good point. Just cohomology doesn't jump. So, so it means that forms local system on our uh, uh, neighborhood. of a good point of uh, the torus in SLM. So specifying a, a tor point on the torus gives me the eigenvalues. So and good means that the character variety is non-singular there. So. Or if you read, if you know the notations of Hausel Rodriguez Vegas, then good point means means generic in the sense of Hausel and so on. Generic. So somehow this is some uh, technical point, which is I. So I, I was so that it's conjectured by Letelier, uh, but somehow it didn't follow from general theory because character variety is not compact. So you, if it was a proper map, then smoothness guarantees that cohomology doesn't change. But if it's not proper, then it doesn't follow. Oh, but you want to deform not only stability condition, but also eigenvalues on the other side. There is some, almost, it's almost there, but somehow, not just not. In <laughs> okay, so, but using the cell decomposition, you just see that each cell is just constant over that, over in this vibration, and so it's clear. So. So this kind of observation plus some Springer theory, theory implies, implies six, which is um, six is here, and six will imply seven. So six is that the cohomology of X with non parabolic point no parabolic points is cohomology of x with parabolic point but you take invariance under the permutation so, so you can find the cohomology of your character variety for complete curve inside the cohomology of character variety with parabolic point by just taking invariance. And then numbers, so, and this implies that curious hard left sheets sheets 
or general. Yes, without the assumption that a parabolic point is not necessary with parabolic point. So it's not quite true that, for instance, the class of omega of the form is constant, but if you pass to the associated grade it in the weight filtration, it becomes constant. And basically, the picture is just constant in for the associated grade it. And this is just action of SN, which is also constant, and there is invariance. You cut it out, and that's nothing happens. So. Right, so this is uh, uh, the, the last thing I wanted to say. Maybe if you have a question or maybe I remember some comment. Sorry? Yeah, okay. I want to show you the favorite thing. That my favorite thing. That, uh, that the surface that looks like this. So for instance, if you, if you want a trefoil case, it was example three, the surface looks like this. So I'm, I have these building blocks. And then I have to do it again. The trefoil is that you have three intersections here. So I have the surface. Now this is, is, has one boundary component. All right, if you follow, the one boundary component. So if you attach a disk, it gives you a torus. And the uh, intersection on this, so this tor intersection form here, form encodes dx over x, dy over y from example two, from example uh, three, three. But in general, you have this funny, how do you say this? When you, uh, for Christmas, you do the, cut some stuff out and you get such pictures. So you get more complicated pictures like this, but they just generally you attach some disks and you get some closed surface and there's some intersection form. That's what controls uh, the simplectic form. Yes, that's it.